How about something small form factor? So I recently built a home theater PC and this is not a budget home theater PC, but you can fit this into your budget, possibly. So the idea with this is that I wanted something really powerful to go in the living room. Even though I don't need all that power, if I have a few friends over and you know want to play some video games or something like that, it's going to be available to me. Now, you can use this as a build guide for a home theater PC. You could use this as a, you know, a an expensive gaming rig, or you could even use this as your desktop that just, you know, does whatever, crunches all day, you're using Photoshop, or maybe you're just doing Word. Uh, it would be a nice small form factor. So you have a lot of different uses with this. It's a PC, you can do whatever you want with it. Uh, when it comes to like a lot of the little specialized home theater PCs, they're really small and sometimes that's all they're good at. They've got a tiny CPU uh, and even some of the, you know, crazier 4K H.265 stuff makes them chug a little bit. So I was like getting sick of that and I was like, you know what? I'm gonna do it myself and we're gonna do it right. So the first thing that I did was pick out a case. Um, because I wanted something that fit the environment and all that kind of stuff. And a lot of people go for the tiny little cases, but you know what, if you've got a living room and you've got some space on your shelf, go for something a little larger like the Silverstone. This is the Silverstone SG13B-Q. Now the difference in the Dash Q and just the regular model is the Dash Q has this piano black finish that goes nice in the shelf, but this one is gonna get a little bit warmer. So if you're gonna be doing a lot of gaming uh, or something, I would probably recommend getting the SG13B not the Dash Q. Um, now this one has mesh in the front. It supports a 140 or a 120 millimeter fan. You'll have to grab that separately, but you can put that in the front. You can put a fan in the front of this one as well, but the problem is, is on the sides, there's not a lot of ventilation. So you'll get some, you know, ventilation going on, but not an extreme amount. So if you're gonna be putting a graphics card and everything else in there, just go ahead and get the regular, not the Dash Q. Now there's plenty of room in this, and I wanna say right off the top of the bat, guys, this is the easiest system that I've ever built there weren't really a lot of parts going on and everything kind of plugged into the motherboard. So for the motherboard, I did not go for the cheapest option on this either. I went for an option that has a lot of features. Um, this motherboard, I probably wouldn't overclock it, but it you can. It's got a really good, you know, really good uh, power delivery system going to the motherboard. It's got a decent heat spreader on top of that. And it just has everything that I want, including wireless AC on board, no extra cards or anything needed. This is the MSI. B450i Gaming Plus AC. Now you also have M.2 on the back of this. You flip it over and you install your M.2 right there on the back. Everything that I need right here in one motherboard. And um, I mean, you guys can take a look at the reviews and stuff, but this motherboard should be everything you need. And it also can support a uh, large graphics card. It's got the little shield on the, uh, the PCI Express slot there to add rigidity. But with this case, it's gonna be sitting upright more likely than not, so. All right, now let's talk about CPU options. So the first thing I did when I when I was building this, I was just thinking, you know, like home theater PC. So I grabbed the Athlon uh, 240GE. Now this one has a sort of a low powered Vega graphics processor on board, so you can just use that for graphics. This is totally fine for home theater. In fact, the Athlon 2200GE for $56 right now on Amazon is totally, completely fine for home theater. So anyway, funny story, I ordered the 240, and they sent me a 220 with a 240 sticker slapped on top of the box. Had a few fights with Amazon and I returned it. By the time I returned it, the um, Ryzen 3 2200G, which is a four core instead of a two core. I mean, the other one's two core hybrid threaded, but this is a four core and it also has a more powerful Vega uh, APU. I was like, you know what? $79, yeah, I'm just gonna grab the Ryzen 3 2200G because that's a much more powerful CPU. It's got the Wraith cooler, which is whisper quiet and I am really happy with this CPU. Now, the Vega onboard graphics will allow you to play a lot of modern games at medium or low settings, um, and most indie games are gonna play just fine at medium or high settings. Now, the cool thing about this is even if you wanted to um, buy a dedicated graphics card, this one still has enough horsepower uh, to be able to play a lot of modern games. So it'll, it'll act as a great four core CPU with the max frequency up to 3.7 and you should be able to easily push, push this to around 4.0 even with the stock cooler. This is a hell of a little CPU for $79. With the APU, it does like some decently fast RAM. If you're only gonna be using this for home theater, you know, you're not gonna need to worry about going crazy with the RAM. In fact, you'd be okay with eight gigs of RAM, especially if you're gonna be using Linux. But this, like I said, is not a budget build. It's everything I want. 
So we grab the G skill, uh, 16 gigabytes of that, and this is the Aegeus memory. And uh, I went for the 2800. It's sort of a compromise between the really expensive like stuff that's above 3000 megahertz. Um, but I liked a little more of a boost because the APU does like fast memory. Again, if you're doing dedicated um, or if you're, you know, not going to be gaming at all, it's not extremely important. Just get some decent RAM. Now, as far as storage goes, um, M.2 for the OS is going to make it way fast. So I grabbed the uh, Patriot Scorch. This is a 256 gigabyte NVMe M.2. Should get up to about 1700 on the read and about 780 on the right. There are faster ones out there on the market, but this is going to be mounted on the bottom without a heat spreader. So I didn't want to go all the way for the crazy, crazy fastest stuff. I didn't want it to overheat. So this is another compromise, but this thing's going to be super fast. Got a Fizen controller and um, shouldn't have any complaints whatsoever there. Now, I was just going to leave it like this, right? And I was finished pretty much building the system at this point, and I was like, this was too easy. I usually like to stream my movies from a NAS or something like that, but I've got a few uh, four terabyte drives lying around, and if you wanted to play games and stuff like that, it might be nice to have a four terabyte drive. So grab one of the HDSD Ultrastar 7K 4000s. Those are 64.95 right now. Grab one of those, throw it in there. Uh, I have an HDSD NAS drive, which is one step even better than this, but it was just lying around, so I threw that in there. But, you know, for the for the budget conscious, this is a really good drive. Get you four terabytes of, uh, of space, plenty of games, plenty of movies on there. Throw that in there. Uh, also, the, the spot where you install this is pretty neat. It's up toward the front. Um, you can remove the entire sled or mounting tray, I guess it is, install your hard drive, and then mount it back in there. It was pretty easy to do. So Silverstone did a hell of a job making this very easy to build in. All right, now last but not least, and some of you guys might want to argue this because of all the uh, mess of cables that, that comes out of this. It's hard for me to argue with how quiet and uh, how much power this is going to deliver for what I need. This is the Thermaltake Smart 500, and it's an 80 plus. It comes in a couple different colors. You can get it with the RGB if you want to, but I didn't need any colors because this is for home theater, right? We got a projector and everything. I don't want a light show on the side watching a movie. So with this 500 watt power supply, that's way too much. Absolutely way too much. You could get by with like 300 watts or, or probably even 250, but 500 watts can allow us to install a GPU later. So, you know, even if people come over and they want to play some games, I could just be like, hold on five minutes and I could grab, uh, you know, a, a 1070 or I could grab like whatever AMD RX 580 or something, just grab one of those off the shelf, pop it in there and then we'll be good to play some, some games on higher settings. But this will allow us to do that. Now, I went for this one uh, because it's, it's a really good price right now. So that's one thing. And also, this case does have a lot of room in the front just to cram a bunch of cables. It's not pretty, uh, but I don't really mind the extra snake of cables for this particular build. Again, if I was going for really clean aesthetic on the inside, I would have gone with modular, but I don't think you need to for this system. That's my opinion. If you want to spend a couple extra bucks, I'm not going to argue with you. Just, I'm tired of arguing on the internet, guys. Now let's talk about your operating system choices. Um, it's really going to be down to whether you want to dedicate this as a home theater PC or if you want this to be an all-around. I know if it's an all-around, you can probably get away with Linux Mint or Ubuntu or something like that. Um, or, you know, Microsoft Windows 10. Throw that on there. So I've put Linux Mint and, uh, and, and also Windows 10 on here. I'm going to play with those two, whatever I'm in the mood for. But you might want to look into Plex or uh, XBMC or something like that, one of the more dedicated Linux installations that will just hook up to all your media. Um, I mean, even there's there's Kodi and all kinds of different stuff out there. So I want to know in the comments what you would install if you were just doing media. Um, I feel a little limited by those installations because I like to do I like to tinker and mess around a little bit. And um, I, I just feel confined by that little interface. But that's me. So let me know what you guys are going to install on your machine. And also let me know what parts you would put in a small form factor PC, in particular an HTPC. We'll see you guys in the comments. Also, do not forget, grab one of these t-shirts. This is the one you wear at the airport accidentally all the time. Every time I go to the airport, I'm wearing like this one and the guys are like, hey, is that an anti-surveillance shirt? That's funny. TSA guys seem to like it. I don't know why. Anyway, grab yourself a mouse as well while you're over there. And uh, we'll see you guys on the forum.